Welcome to our discussion on inferences from two sample standard deviations or variances. In this lesson, uh, we're going to have to use the F test when dealing with uh, variances and deviations. And uh, unlike dealing with proportions and means, the F test is very sensitive to departures from normal distributions. So we'll have to deal with the case when we're not sampling from a normally distributed population. Okay, so the F test as a hypothesis test. So when we're dealing with uh, two variances or two standard deviations and we're trying to conduct a hypothesis test on those two uh, measurements, we're going to use the F test for that procedure. The notation that we're going to be using here is similar to what we've seen before with s squared being a variance only now we're going to have um, you know s sub 1 squared because that's the the uh, variance of one group and we're always going to let s1 be the larger of the two that's really important and then of course s sub 2 is going to be the smaller uh, variance from the two groups n1 of course is the sample size right of that one group and then sigma squared sub 1 is going to be the population variance that corresponds to the sample with the larger of the two variances. So you'll have uh, you know two versions of everything s squared n and sigma squared you'll have sub ones and sub twos for the two different samples that you have. You'll always let the sub ones correspond to the group with the larger of the two variances. So make note of that. Okay, requirements. The two populations have to be independent and the two samples have to be simple random samples. That's pretty basic standard stuff. But then the two populations each have to be normally distributed. This is a very strict requirement. So we really have to be sure uh, and, and examine our populations and make sure that we're pulling from a normally distributed population. So you should be doing uh, histograms and normal quantile plots on your data always to make sure that they're normal before you run an F test. If there's any departure from normality, your results are um, hugely suspect. And there are procedures that we can do that allow us to still uh, run hypothesis testing and confidence intervals and stuff for two variances or two standard deviations when we don't have uh, normally distributed populations. Uh, so it's, it's very important to make sure that we have those before we run an F-test. Here is our test statistic for an F-test. Very simply, it's just the ratio of the two variances, right? Where S1 squared is the larger of the two. Remember, we always want the, the S1 to be the larger. So you're going to have the larger variance over the smaller variance. And pay attention, these are variances, not standard deviations, right? Because they're being squared. So F is just basically the ratio of those two variances. Your p-values are always automatically provided by technology. You can estimate them using tables, but it's really not good try and do technology. You can get critical values uh, from tables, um, but again it's better just to use the p-value method. Uh, your significance level is alpha like it always is. The degree of freedom for the numerator is n minus 1 where you know it's the n for that and then for the denominator is also n minus 1 but it's the n for that group so that's why it's n sub 1 minus 1 and n sub 2 so your degrees of freedom are, are normal it's still n minus 1 you just use the individual n's for each of the two groups properties of the F distribution if you haven't seen the F distribution before it's similar to the chi-square distribution in that it is not symmetric um, and they're all uh, zero and above, right? You can't get negative uh, values from the F distribution, and that seems pretty obvious if you look at the um, calculations for it. You're taking an S squared and another S squared, so you're squaring two numbers, so those automatically become positive, and then you're taking the ratio of two positive numbers. So you're going to get a positive number, and it's always going to be bigger than zero. It's very simple. Uh, the exact shape of the distribution always depends on the two degrees of freedom, similar to uh, both uh, T and chi square. Here is what a uh, F distribution looks like. You'll notice that it is very similar to the chi-square in shape. Um, if the two populations have equal variances, then of course F is going to be equal to 1, or really close to 1. So you're basically looking for F values that are close to 1 if you're trying to show that the two populations have equal variances. 
and then conversely um, if, f, if f is far away from one that shows that the two uh, populations have different variances right so if they have the same you're gonna get an f value close to one here's an example it's back to that creativity score response example we had before we're going to use a 0.05 significance level to test the claim that those people who uh, did this test with a red background had creativity scores with the standard deviation equal to the standard deviation for those tested with the blue background so the claim is that the two groups have equal standard deviations and of course they give us n x bar and s the standard deviation of both samples we check our requirements the two populations are independent of each other and as described before um, we can assume that the two samples are simple random samples now we have no idea of the distribution of the data so in this case we'll have to just assume they're normal if we were actually given the raw data we could test for normality but since we just have the summary statistics we're just going to assume they're normal just so we can actually run this example okay step one we ought, we need to identify our claims right the claim is that the standard deviations are equal so the opposite is that they're not equal so there is our h1 and h0 very simply that variance is equal to variance right and variance is not equal to variance you'll notice that even though the claim was that the standard deviations were equal we're testing for variances you always test variances you can't test you can but you really shouldn't test with standard deviations you get a more accurate test when you use variances because you might remember that standard deviations are uh, a biased measure right whereas variances are an unbiased measure so it's better to work with um, standard deviation sorry it's better to work with variances which is what we're doing here okay step two they told us alpha was 0.05 step three is to calculate our F statistic which is really easy we don't need any technology for this we just put in the uh, the standard deviations that they gave us uh, paying close attention that we have to square each of those numbers right because we have to do actually variance over variance instead of standard deviation over standard deviation and we get a test statistic of 2.3706 we get degrees of freedom of 34 and 35 and then from a table we can find the uh, critical F value is between 1.87 and 2.07 and technology um, can be used to find the exact critical F value of 1.967 and the P value can also be determined using technology and we get a P value of 0 0.01 which of course since that is less than alpha that means we make our um, decision and we reject the null hypothesis and we relate that back to the original claim meaning there's sufficient evidence to warrant the rejection of the claim that the two standard deviations are equal or in other words the uh, statistics seem to support the idea that the two uh, samples or then in this case the two populations have different standard deviations okay let's see how we can actually run uh, this with technology with the uh, calculator it's uh, very simple we go back to our standard uh, menu when we're doing these types of tests the stat tests menu if you scroll all the way to the bottom by just pressing the up arrow key you'll see that near the bottom is your two samp f test for two sample f test you'll select that one if you had the raw data you would choose data but since we have uh, just the uh, summary statistics we choose statistics then you fill everything in remember you have to make uh, s1 the larger of the two so there's my 0 0.97 and an n1 of 35 0 0.63 36 we're testing that they're not equal choose calculate and there is the same f value I wrote it here 2.3706 there's our p-value 0.0129 very simple in the calculator okay what about if we want to try stat crunch it is equally simple in stat crunch we go back to our uh, same menus that we normally use in stat crunch stat we're dealing with variances right variant statistics we have two samples data again would be if we had raw data in uh, lists in our columns but we have a summary we have to put in uh, the information that we had before the variance sample size um, for each of our two uh, 
samples. Remembering again to put the larger one first. We're testing that right their ratio is equal to one. That's what this is saying, right? So it's the same thing as saying that they're equal. Their ratio is equal to one if, if they're the same number or not equal to one. We run that hypothesis test. There's our F statistic. And why is it why is it different? What's wrong? What what have we what have we messed up? Ah, yes, you have to remember that when we're dealing with stat crunch, this is variance statistics, which means these numbers have to be the square of our uh, the numbers we had, right? The numbers we had before were standard deviations. So we have to square both of those and put in instead variances. So now with our variances in place instead of the standard deviations, we can try it again and now we get the same results, the 2.3706 and the 0 0.0129. Moral of the story, just remember when you're dealing with stat crunch, you're doing uh, variance statistics, right? So it's always asking for your numbers as variances and often the data you have will be standard deviations and so you'll need to square those numbers first before you plug them into StatCrunch. Okay, now we discussed at the beginning that uh, sometimes we have to deal with um, data that is not normally distributed. So there are alternative methods, two methods in fact, that we can use uh, that aren't so sensitive to departures from normality. So if we have uh, populations that aren't normally distributed, we can use one of these two methods. They're not very robust, they're not fantastic, at least one of them isn't, uh, but sometimes it's all we can do. So just be aware that they exist. There's the count five method. If the two sample sizes are equal, see, so that's really sketchy, that first of all you have to have two sample sizes that are equal, so you won't be using this method a lot. And if one sample has at least five of the largest mean absolute deviations, so now you have to take each sample and calculate all of the deviations, right? Take every single data value and subtract the mean from it and look at all of those deviations. And now you're looking and you're ranking them. And in one sample, it must have five, right, of the largest mean absolute deviation. So mean, uh, absolute meaning it could be a, you know, a deviation of negative 12 versus positive 13. Negative 12 is, is a deviation of 12, right, just in the negative direction. So if one sample has five of the largest ones, so you have to rank them all and, and then count, okay, well, five of the largest ones are in this one sample, then you can conclude its population has the larger variance. If it doesn't, if the largest deviations are kind of evenly spread amongst the two, then you can't uh, conclude that one is larger than the other. It's a silly test. It's not used a lot, but it does exist. <clears throat> More precise test is the Levine-Brown-Forsyth test. What you do here is you take each data value, right, each x, and you do a linear transformation. You take each x, you subtract the median, right, so you have to calculate the median for your two samples. You subtract the median from each of your x's and now you've calculated all of these kind of pseudo deviation scores. Instead of a normal deviation score where you take x and subtract the mean from it, here you're subtracting the median. Then you take the absolute value of all those and now you have a big list of these positive uh, kind of deviation scores. Using those transform values, so that new set of data, right, those new set of deviation scores, you just conduct a simple t-test of equality of the means of those two samples. So you now have, you know, sample one, let's say, has 40 pieces of data. You compute all 40 of these deviation scores, and now you take the mean of those deviation scores. Remember you have to first make sure they're all positive, right? So make them all absolute value, right? And then take the, the mean of that. Your other sample, let's say, had 50 pieces of data in it. You calculate all 50 of those deviation scores, make sure they're all positive, then compute the mean of that sample of 50, and now you just do a simple t-test to compare the means of those two sets of data. Now, you're, if the t-test for equality 
comes back right and says they are equal then you're basically showing that the two variances are the same so that's what you're doing you're comparing the means in substitution for comparing the variances okay so those are the two alternative methods I don't think we'll be using them at all but just be aware that they exist